Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I am one of the authors of Technid. I am excited to kick off the Ansible Series 2 course with you. I have received requests for an update on the Ansible course, especially for versions 2.11 and above. There have been some changes like the introduction of Ansible Navigator, Ansible Content Collection, Execution Environment and ETC. So today I'm here to bring you the refreshed course and what's great about this is that it's not just for those preparing for the new Ansible certification exam. It is also perfect for beginners starting their journey with Ansible. This course is designed with beginners in mind and due to the urgency in the request, I'll be releasing this course in batches. So let's um, get started without further ado. Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I am one of the authors of Technid. I welcome you to the Ansible Series 2. This is the second series of our Ansible course. I will also drop the link to the first series in the description box below in case you need to refer to some information in that series. More so, if you're going to be writing the RHC certification exam, you can check our website for the exam preparation or practice questions. This would help you in preparation for your exams. So without further ado, let's get started. What is Ansible? Ansible is a software, a very simple and easy to use software that is used to automate and orchestrate IT tasks. A straightforward illustration of this concept is this. Imagine you need to install and configure the Apache web server on 10 different nodes. By the use of Ansible, you can automate this process across all 10 nodes simultaneously, and this eliminates the need to manually install and configure Apache on each node one at a time, streamlining the deployment process and saving considerable time and effort. So let's look at the Ansible concept, component, and architecture. In this section, we will talk about components such as controller, manage nodes, inventories, plugin, module, playbook, and haddock. The Ansible architecture is similar to a server client-based system. To use Ansible, there must be two types of machines. One machine is the Ansible control node, also known, also known as the controller, while the other machine is the manage node. And of course, there can be more than one manage nodes in the Ansible architecture. The controller is the node the Ansible software will be installed on, while the manage node or nodes are the nodes that will be managed by the controller. The managed nodes needs to be stored in a repository called inventory or Ansible inventories. Also, the controller will communicate with the managed host by a plugin and the default Ansible connection plugin is SSH, which is sufficient for the connection of Linux machines. This makes Ansible simple yet powerful because we don't need an agent for the communication between the controller and the managed nodes. For you to be able to automate or orchestrate your IT task, the module or Ansible module is needed. And Ansible module are small units of Python code. Also, there are hundreds of Ansible modules and the Ansible module can only be executed by a tool or component called Playbook or Haddock 2 as well, yeah. So Ansible Playbook is the Ansible component that consists of instructions and tags that you want to automate to execute the module. And the Ansible Playbook is written in the YAML format. As we progress in this course, you will gain familiarity with the playbooks and how they can be written. So let's talk about the Ansible installation. The Ansible software 
it can be gotten in three different ways. It can be gotten as one as part of the package shipped with the Red Hat Enterprise Linux starting from Rail 9 in the upstream repository. It can also be gotten from the upstream community. And thirdly, the Ansible software can be gotten as Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform products. Getting Ansible by this method is recommended for production environments because you will get full support from Red Hat. You will also be able to download Ansible and its important tool from the Red Hat repository directly. Before we install Ansible, let's discuss some other Ansible important tools or packages, one of which is the Ansible Content Navigator. The Ansible Content Navigator, also known as the Ansible Navigator, is used to develop, test, and run Ansible playbooks. This tool replaces the Ansible Playbook tool and other command line tools such as Ansible Config, Ansible Inventory, and etc. The Ansible Content Navigator also separates the control node on which you run Ansible from the automation execution environment that runs it by running your playbook in a container. So also let us look at what automation execution environment is. So this is the container image encompassing Ansible or Ansible core, Ansible content collections, as well as the necessary Python libraries, executables, and other dependencies essential for playbook execution. So with Ansible Navigator, you have the option to choose a specific automation execution environment for running your playbook. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at a step-by-step -step guide of how to install the Ansible software. So thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like, share, comment, and when you do this, you will encourage us to do more of those videos. Thanks, more, thanks for watching again and bye for now. Hi everyone, Victor here again, and I welcome you to lesson two of the Ansible series. In today's lesson, we're going to look at how to install the Ansible software. And here's my control node. And like we discussed in the previous lesson, we looked at ways at which we can install the Ansible software. So I don't have um, a subscription, and that means that I won't be able to install the Ansible software from CDN. The next available option for me is to install the Ansible software from the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 systems. So with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, the Ansible software is shipped with the ISO package. So what I'm going to do then is to configure my local repository so that I can install the Ansible software from the real Night package. So on this system, I already have the local repository being configured. If you don't know how to configure a local repository with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 system, you can check the description box below um, I have a link, you know, that link would take you to the video or to the um, article where I, you know, um, showed people how to configure the local repository using the rel 9 ISO. So if you look at my system, if I do cut, oops, let me just cd to yum.repos.d. If I do ls, you can see my local repository file. So if I do cut local.repo, so you can see the configuration file for my local repository. And you can also see that the file is pointing to slash mnt slash upstream, meaning that if I go to slash mnt and I do ls, you can see the upstream, you can see the packages. So I'm going to be installing Ansible from this um, local repository that I have configured on my system. And another thing I want to do is, I don't want to install Ansible as the 
um, as the root user. So what I'm also going to do is to, you know, install Ansible as another user. So I already have the user Victor here on my system. So if I do ID Victor, you can see that I have the um, user Victor here on my system. And so what I'm going to do is to make sure that Victor is a pseudo user. And for me to be able to do that, I can just do, um, I can go and copy the important parameter in the sudo house file. So if I just scroll down, let me see. So this is the file I need. So I'm just going to copy this one here. And then I can exit. So I'm going to create um, a drop-in file for Victor. So I'm going to have um, sudo hours, sudo D. This is going to be Victor. Okay, I already, whoa, I already have this here. That's fine. So meaning that Victor is already um, a pseudo user. So let me just copy it and paste it again so you can see what I did here. So all I just did is to edit this and turn this to Victor. So meaning that Victor um, is in the pseudo group, right? So I can now say SSH um, Victor uh, localhost. So I can give him the password for Victor. So you can see that now we are logged in as Victor. So to install the Ansible software, you need to make sure that you have the Python version of 3.8 or a version that is higher than 3.8. So if I just do sudo python dash dash version, you can see that we have a Python version um, 3.9 meaning that we are good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is to install the Ansible software. So to do that, I can just say sudo dnf install. Let me just remove this cursor. Install Ansible core. So I can just say yes to all. So Ansible is already is, is installing from our local repository. And you can see that the installation is complete and if i do ansible dash dash version so you can see that we have the ansible version of 2.12 being installed so this is cool and now that we have the ansible being installed we also need to install a very important tool to work with ansible which is the ansible navigator and to install the ansible navigator um, we need the PIP Python module. So I'm going to have to install the PIP Python module. So to install the PIP Python module, I can just do DNF install. DNF install. This is going to be Python, Python 3. Then the PIP module, I can just say yes to all. So what we have in okay, I think the command is wrong. There is um, a typo error. TNF so no good substitution management, blah blah blah. Okay, so I need to add sudo. So now we can see that the Python module is being installed, right? Now we can use this Python module, the PIP Python module to install Ansible Navigator. So I can just say Python, Python 3, module PIP, install Ansible Navigator. Okay, um, I did not use the sudo but let's see if this is going to install ansible navigator yeah it's actually doing that so what i'm going to do is to pause the video and when this installation is done i'm also going to resume the video back so this has been successfully installed so if i now do ansible if i do ansible ansible navigator Dash dash version. 
So you can see the version of the Ansible Navigator that we have. So we are, we are actually doing well. And now we need to download or make sure that the Ansible Navigator, which is also the Automation Content Navigator, we need to make sure that you know this is able to download the Execution Environment Container Image, meaning that we need to have Podman being installed on our system because without Podman, right, won't be able to have the container image being downloaded. So I can just do DNF install podman. Just put sudo dnf install podman do y. So this is installing the podman tool for our container image. So I'm just also going to post the video and when this is done installing I'm going to resume the video. So now that this is done, if you have a, a, a credentials, you know, that you can use to log into the registry, of course, you can just do podman login followed by the registry name. And after which you can now do a podman pool to download the container image for the execution environment then after which we can then you know verify the available images that have been downloaded and after which you can just do um, of course to verify you can do podman images right then after which you can now do um you can now do ansible navigator ansible navigator images to see the container images but because i don't have any credentials i am like you know i am leveraging on my local repository so what i'm going to do in that regard is to use the ansible navigator command just ansible navigator command right so i'm going to say ansible navigator command so this is going to leverage on my local repository and it's going to download the container image for the execution environment. I can also do Ansible Navigator images. So because I'm doing this for the first time, it is going to download the images, but I'm going to, you know, just simply use Ansible Navigator and I can now say enter. So it's pulling the image trying to pull the image you can see trying to pull ghcr.io.ans slash ansible slash creator so what i'm going to do is uh, this might take time i'm also going to post the video and when this is done i'm going to resume the video so this is copying blog still copying blog file so this is done so now we can, you know, press the escape command. So if I do Ansible, or if I, I can do Ansible Navigator images, or if I do Podman images. So you can see that we have our image being downloaded. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson and we will continue with our Ansible series. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. When you do this, you would encourage us to do more of those videos. Thank you once more and bye for now. Hi everyone, Victor here again. And in today's lesson, we'll be looking at what Ansible inventory is and how to create one. Like we discussed in our first lesson, Ansible inventory is a repository that hosts the Ansible managed host. The managed host can be specified in the inventory file by the IP addresses or fully qualified domain name. For example, if you have two managed hosts with the IP addresses and FQDN of, of this, which is um, 192.168.72.11 with server1.techni.com and 192.168.72.12 with server2.techni.com 
you can create an inventory file you know with the name for example ansible inventory and then you can specify the managed host either by their ips or by their fqdn let's create an ansible inventory file ansible supports the ini data structure when creating an inventory file ansible also supports any type of data structure though I'm going to create an inventory file with the name Ansible Inventory. So I can just say Ansible VI Ansible Inventory. So for me to specify for server1.techni.com, I will just you know put it in the INI data structure format. So I can say server1.technid com or server two dot technid dot com like i said you can specify an inventory you can specify a managed host either by their fqdn or by their ip addresses so you can also let's say we have another server which is you know which we're going to be specifying by an ip address so i can just say 72.144 and i can save this file so to confirm, I can just say Ansible dash dash list hosts all hosts. I want to list the all hosts in the inventory, which is dash I Ansible inventory. So you can see that in the inventory file, we have three hosts, which are server one, server two, and the one that is listed with the IP address. We can also group the managed host in the inventory file. So let's say you have some set of hosts which are front end hosts. You can group them in the inventory file. So let's just open this file again and I can, you know, come here and then put the host in a group. So I can just say front end group and I can put in the managed host. This can be server3.technid.com and server4.technid.com. So I can save this file. And when I run this command again, so I can either run the com this command as against the front end group only, or I can just, you know, do all. If I do all, you can see all the all the hosts that we have in the manage. I mean, all the hosts that we have in the inventory. You can see that we have five hosts all together. So if I wish, I can just you know run this command against the front end group only. Front end, and you can see that it's going to list the host in the front end group. So let's open this inventory file again. So after front end, I can also add back end group. So I can say back end. If I wish, I can leave a space. And if I don't want to leave a space, it is also fine. But I just like to do my things neat. And that's why I'm leaving a space. So here I can say server5.technid.com and server6.technid.com. I can save this file and then I can run this command again for all. So you can see that we have seven hosts. And if I want to run it as against the back end group only, I can just say back end. You can see that we have two hosts for the back end group. And to add a single host and grouped host in the inventory file, we should make sure so. If you see here, we have both single host and grouped host. So if I want to add another single host, we should make sure that the hosts are being listed at the beginning of the file. Because if you come here, right, if you come here, for example, and you put in another host, let me just look for another IP address, 72.44, for example, 
if you put in another IP, Ansible will not see this as a single managed host. Ansible will group it with the back end, you know, with the back end group. So whenever you want to add an individual or single host, it has to be at the beginning of the file. So we can also put a group of managed hosts inside a group, and this is called nesting or nested group. So for example, you know, I can have another group, I can say production, and then because I want to put the front end group and the back end group inside a production group, I need to specify it as children, meaning that the front end and the back end are children to production. And now I can say front end, front end, back end. So I can, you know, save this file. And if I do Ansible list, um, let's say front end, or let's say production, we can see that we have four hosts in the production nested group because two hosts belongs to the one for front end and, and another two hosts belongs to the one for back end. And one thing you can also do again is that a managed host can be in two different groups. So for example, if I, you can see that for the front end group, I have server4.technic.com, which is this. So I can decide to add this group again in another group, so I can just say server4.technit.com and if I save this file, so I can do all or for backend so you can see that we have the managed host being listed. Another thing we can do is that if we want to check the, um, the the host in a graphical manner, I can just say Ansible inventory dash dash graph. So this is for the all for all groups, and it's showing me for the um, ungrouped group. Anyways, I like to use Ansible Navigator because. This is the new tool, so I'm just going to say Ansible Navigator, Ansible Navigator, that's inventory, Ansible inventory. Oops, issues we found applying, blah, blah, blah. Mm, configuration field using default. Okay, so where where okay, I think we have um you have an error with the way we used the command. Okay, let me just Ansible Navigator Inventory. Ansible Navigator Inventory. Okay. So, all right, so it's been hard now. So we can do zero, which is to browse groups, and we can do one, which is to browse host. So if I want to browse my host, I'll just say one. You can see the list of the managed host. And if I want to go back, I'll just say escape. And if I want to browse groups, I would say, I'll just press zero. You can see the groups that we have and if i want if i'm done i will just press escape so this is how i'm going to use the ansible navigator tool and i can also press escape to go back to my command line and what i can also do is to use this command ansible navigator ansible inventory um i can say put it in the standard out standard output and i can say list So it's taking its time. So you can see the list 
of the host. So thank you for watching. All right, before I round this off, um, what we've been doing so far, right, is creating an inventory file in a static way. So there are two types, there are two ways in which an article inventory file can be created. One way is creating a static inventory, which we have been doing so far. And another way is creating an inventory file um, by using dynamic way, and that's that's dynamic inventory. So that would require writing a script to create an inventory file. And creating an inventory file in the dynamic way is out of the scope of the study. So thank you once more for watching. I'm going to see you in the lesson. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, comment. When you do this, you will encourage us to do more. And bye for now. Hi everyone, Victor here again. And in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at managing the Ansible configuration file. For you to be able to use Ansible, you need to understand the Ansible configuration file. The Ansible configuration file allows you to manage the behavior of Ansible and Ansible settings, that is, your custom settings. In Ansible Series 1 course, we discussed extensively on the Ansible configuration file. I'll be dropping the link to that particular lesson in the description box below in case you are interested in checking it out. The Ansible configuration file consists of several sections with their settings. However, the two basic sections that is needed to run the Ansible operations at the default section and the privilege escalation section. So for example, to create an Ansible configuration to be able to run your Ansible operations, you can create the Ansible configuration file in slash home slash victor slash Ansible slash Ansible.cfg. And like I said, we need two basic sections which are the default and the privilege escalation section. So for the default section, we can have parameters such as the inventory, and this will be the path to the inventory file. So here, the path to the inventory file will be slash home slash victor slash ansible slash inventory. And we can also have parameters such as the remote underscore user, and this means that the user that will run the Ansible operations on the managed host or on the remote host is Victor. And we also have parameter like ask underscore pass, meaning that whenever the Ansible operation or whenever the whenever Ansible rather wants to run the Ansible operation, it shouldn't prompt us for a password. So the ask underscore pass means ask for password and we're saying that false. So whenever the user Victor is going to be running the Ansible operation, you know, with the SSH, it should not ask for a password. And if Ansible cannot execute the task as the user Victor, let there be an escalation of, of a privileged user. And that's why we have the privilege escalation section. And under the privilege escalation section, we have parameters such as become equals true, meaning that yes, let there be a privilege escalation, let it be true. And we have become underscore method equals pseudo, meaning that the method at which there's going to be a privilege escalation is going to be a pseudo method and the user that will be used to escalate privilege is the root user and that's why we have become underscore user equals root and also become underscore ask underscore pass equals false meaning that it shouldn't prompt us for a password and since we have the and since we have specified the location of our inventory file in home victor ansible inventory so now we can create our inventory file in that 
directory and we can you know have it such as emn1.technic.com so that is the the manage host one so i just used it as ansible manage node one and the other one is ansible manage node two dot technic dot com so those so those are the manage nodes those are the nodes that ansible is going to be managing so having configured the settings and behavior of ansible we can also configure the settings and behavior of the automation content navigator also known as ansible navigator so to configure the behavior of the Ansible Navigator command, we can also create a file in the YAML format in the location home slash Victor slash Ansible slash Ansible dash Navigator dot YML. And we can have these parameters. And so these are the parameters that would control the behavior of the Ansible Navigator command. And you can see that we have the Ansible Navigator, we have the execution environment we have the image and we have pool so we are saying that for the image we are saying that this will be the execution environment container image that will be used and for the pool we have policy which is missing meaning that you should pull the container image if it does not exist on the local machine and we also have parameters such as um playbook artifacts and we are saying false meaning we are disabling playbook artifacts and this will disable the generation of playbook artifacts when using the ansible navigator command the log files that archives the playbooks runs information is known as the playbook artifact and you should also note that generating or generation of playbook playbook artifacts must be disabled when you require a password prompt when running a playbook it is also um, a good idea to use the standard out module parameter when using the ansible navigator command so that it will not hang or fail to run so let's go to the directory that we have the ansible configuration file which is in um, cd slash home slash victor Anyways, I'm on, I'm in Victor Home in Ansible. So if I do ls, you can see the Ansible configuration file. And if I do cut Ansible.cfg, you can see what we have in the Ansible configuration file. And if I also do Ansible-navigator.yml, you can see the parameters we have here too as well. So I intentionally commented this out because I don't want it. I don't want this image to be pulled because we already have an, an execution image when we installed the Ansible Navigator and that's okay with um, um, for use in this course for now. So what we can do is to see the current Ansible configuration settings. And for us to be able to do that, we can simply use the command ansible-config dump so you can see the configuration settings the ones in the color green means that they are the default settings and if i scroll down let's see if you can see our settings so you can see the one in the color yellow this is our own settings the current settings and you can see that the default ask pass here is false and if you scroll down you will see all of our settings and if you also want to use the ansible navigator command so let me just exit this so if i want to use the ansible navigator command i can just say ansible navigator config so this would also see the current ansible configuration settings so it's waiting to collect the Ansible configuration. So you can also see the current settings. And like I said, the ones in color green are the default settings, while the ones in the color yellow is her own settings. So to see the list, to see or list the Ansible execution 
environment images, we can use the command Ansible Navigator Images. So you can see the execution environment image that we're using. And if there are no images, Ansible Navigator will try to pull the execution environment image. So you can check the website or our blog site for other documentation related to the Ansible configuration file. And I'll be dropping the link in the description box below. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, comment. And when you do this, we encourage us to do more videos. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at how to prepare our lab environment for this course. Thank you once more and bye for now. Hi everyone, Victor here again. And in today's lesson, we're going to be building our Ansible lab for this course. So here's my control node, which is ACN Ansible control node with the IP address of 192.168.72.148. And I also have two managed nodes with the IP addresses of 146 and 145. So I have it as AMN1 meaning Ansible Manage Node 1 and AMN2 meaning Ansible Manage Node 2. So in one of our previous lessons, um, we have installed the Ansible software on the control node and we also created a user vector and made the user a sudo user. And in this other node 2, we would also do the same but let's just continue we will get there so the first thing we need to do is to be able to resolve the ip addresses to the host names and since i don't have dns we're going to leverage on the etc host file so for the ansible control node if i do card slash etc host file so you can see the parameters here you can see that I have the IP address for the ACN and I have the FQDN here too. So for the AMN1, we have the same thing here. And for the AMN2, we have the same thing here. So what we're going to do is that we will make sure that we also have all these parameters in the host files of the two managed nodes. And when you come here, you can, I can just cut the file. You can see that I have same here, and if you come here too as well, so you can see that I have the same here too as well. Depending on your own environment, you can just you know put in your own IP address and your own host name. And if you want to use the same thing I am using exactly, of course, you feel feel free to copy this and put this in your own environment as well too. So now that we've been able to do this, so if I, for example, if I just do ping amn2.technic.com, so you can see that this is responding. So the next thing we're going to do is to create the users that will be doing all the Ansible operation for both the control node and the manage nodes. And for the control node, I have the user Victor, and I have also already made this user Victor a pseudo user. And we did that in one of our previous lesson. So for the manage nodes to, we need to create the user Victor and make them a pseudo user too as well, because the user Victor is the user that will be doing all the Ansible operations on the managed nodes. So if I do id victor, oops, id victor, you can see that I have the user victor. And if I come here too as well, what all you can do is to you know create the user by saying user at victor. I already have the user here, and you can also say password victor, and you can password the user 
And what you can do is to create a drop-in file in the sudoers directory. So if I do cd etc sudoers.d, if I do ls, you can see the drop-in file here. And if I do cat victor, so it's just the same thing we did on the control node. You will do the same for the manage nodes too as well. You know, we have we have the same user too here, which is Victor, and Victor is also um, ID Victor here. Is also yeah, Victor is also a pseudo user. So having done this, the next thing we're going to do is to create the Ansible configuration file on the control node. And this is my control node. So if I do, if I go to the directory, which is um, cd slash home slash victor um, slash ansible. So if I do pwd, so you can see my directory here. And if I do ls, you can see that I've already created the Ansible configuration file here. And if I do cut ansible.cfg, ansible you can see what I have here in the configuration file. I have the default and I also have the privilege escalation section. I have already explained the meaning of all these parameters in our previous lesson. So the next thing we need to do now is to create the inventory file just like we specified here and if i do ls you can also see my inventory file here don't forget that the inventory file is in slash home slash victor slash ansible slash inventory and that's why we also need to put our inventory file here and if i do cut inventory so let me just do vi inventory so you can see the manage nodes in our inventory file. So what I want to do is that I also want to create a group. So I can just call this group, um, let's say development group. So I can put in the amn one dot technique dot com. Oops, am one dot technique com and amn2 amn2 dot technique.com it doesn't matter anyway um you can either make make it caps or in lower case um that doesn't matter for dns so now that we have our inventory file the next thing we need to do uh, let me just quickly check something here all right so this is good so the next thing we need to do is to create our ssh keys right so we need to configure the ssh based authentication and not password based authentication and from the control node we can generate the ssh keys and copy them to the manage nodes and of course to generate the ssh keys you can just use the ssh dash keygen command so because i already have so just press enter and it's saying that should it write the existing key i'm going to say no so i already have an existing key here in your own case just press enter 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 till it generates the key and when the key is being generated all you need to do is to just use the ssh copy id command to copy the key to the manage nodes so this would be um, amn1.technic.com so i already have it copied there so all you need to do is to press enter and then do for the amn2 and you can press enter and copy the ssh keys you know you can either use the fqdn or the ip address whichever one you wish to use you can use that to copy this um, keys to the manage nodes and when you're done doing this the next thing you're going to do is to test and see if you can log into the manage nodes without prompting you for password and i can just test by saying ssh victor at amn1 
www.technic.com. So you can see that I can log in successfully without prompting me for password. So I can just exit EMN1 and then I can try for EMN2. So you can see that I can log in without asking me for a password. And the next thing I'm going to do is to test my connection. And to do that, I can just say Ansible. Ansible dash dash list. I want to list all the hosts in the inventory. Ansible. Oops. So I'm in HMN2. Sorry about that. So I need to go back to the Ansible control node. And now I can say Ansible dash dash list host all. So you can see that I've been able to list all the hosts in the inventory file. And I can also say Ansible. So let me ping the host and let's see if it's going to reply. So I'm going to use the ping module to ping all the hosts. And if I do enter, let's see what we're going to have here. So you can see a success. You can see that everything is green. So um, I actually, I would have actually used um, a playbook and used the Ansible Navigator command. But since we've not discussed about playbook, uh, we're going to look at how to write playbooks in the next in the next lesson and then we're going to use the ansible navigator command to run this ping command again so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next lesson and please don't forget to like share subscribe comment when you do this we will encourage us to do more of this video and i'm also going to be dropping the link to the documentation of this lesson in the description box below and i'll also drop the link to the to the ansible series one um, lab lesson also in the description box below. It's it's the same thing actually. So thank you once more. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Hi everyone, Victor here again. And in today's lesson, we'll be looking at how to write and run the Ansible playbook. In one of our previous lessons, we discussed what a playbook is. And we understood that a playbook is a file that contains instructions or set of instructions of the IT task that you want to automate. The next question would be, how is then a playbook written to contain this IT task? Before I continue, I would like to say that I have discussed extensively on how a playbook can be written in the Ansible Series 1 course. So in case you are interested, I'll be dropping the link to that course, to that particular lesson rather, in the description box below. So moving forward, a playbook contains, or basically contains the following. A play, a task, and a module. And a playbook can be written often in the YAML format. So what is a play? This is a perfect example of a basic playbook. So let's understand what a play is with this playbook. A play defines a host or group of hosts that will be mapped to a task or group of tasks. So for this playbook, this is the play and this is the task. And the name of the play is my first play deploy Apache and the name and the host this play defines is emn1.techni.com and of course a play can define uh, more than one host and the task that is mapped with this play is this task and the name of the task is my first task install httpd so let's go back to how we define a play. We said a play defines a host, which is this host or group of hosts that will be mapped to a task, which is this task. 
or group of tasks. And the, and the name of the task is my first task install httpd, which is this. So again, what is a task? A task is an instruction that will be executed on the managed host with the use of modules and or argument. So for this playbook, the name of the task, of course, is my first task, install httpd, which is this. This is the name of the task. And the task will use the module ansible.butin.dnf. This is the module that the task is going to be is going to use. And the module is going to do the following. The module will install the package name, which is httpd. And the module will use the argument state latest, meaning that it's going to install the latest package of the httpd using this DNF module. And of course, what is even DNF? What does DNF do? The DNF installs packages. And now let's go back to the definition of a task. We said a task is an instruction that will be executed on the managed host, which is this managed host. So these instructions are all going to be executed on the managed host. And Vala, this is how to write a, play, a basic playbook. So let's run this playbook. So on my control node, if I do ls, of course, if I do pwd, I have my files here. And if I do ls, so the play is playbook1.yml. So I can just say cat's playbook1.yml. So you can see the play. And of course, to run this play, you can say ansible. Ansible Navigator, we can say run model standard out and the playbook is playbook one dot yml. So when we run this play, let's see the outputs that we're going to get here. So the first thing we see here is that it's trying to gather facts and you can see the first play here, which is my first play, which is to deploy Apache. And it's gathering fat and then it's gone to my first task which is to install httpd and you can see here changed meaning that the httpd package has been installed on this node and you can see the play recap so we have just one changes and we have zero failed action and we have zero skipped action we have zero rescued action and we have zero ignored action so whenever you run a playbook and you see the color, this color yellow, it means that a change has been made. And when you see the color green, it means that uh, no changes has been made. And that is why we usually say that a playbook is idempotent. So when you say when we say a playbook, a playbook is idempotent, we mean that you can rerun the playbook as many times as possible if there are no changes made it will come back as this color green and if there are any changes made it will come back as the color yellow meaning that a change has been made and that's what we're seeing here that the package httpd has been installed on the managed node node amn1.technic.com now that we have run our first basic playbook let's understand what a module is from our playbook this is the module which is ansible.guillotine.dnf so let's forget about this ansible.guillotine and let's pay attention to this dnf and what does the dnf command do of course it does install packages in this case the DNF module is used to install the package HTTPD. And so then it is safe to say that a module is a package or tool or unit of code that is used to accomplish your IT task. There are a lot I want to talk about module, but I don't want to module things up here. So I'm going to be dropping a link in the description box below 
where you can learn more about the Ansible module. And I recommend that you should check that link and so you can learn more about it. So what we're going to do next is to write a playbook with multiple plays and multiple tasks. So this is an example of a playbook with multiple plays and multiple tasks. And this playbook is just an extension or a continuation of the first playbook that we ran. So in the first playbook, of course, this is the first play and this is the first task. And now what we did is to add another task to this play. So we have a second task that has been added to this play. So what the task will do, of course, is to make sure that, so this is the name of the task, which is start and enable HTTPD. So the task will make sure that the HTTPD service is started and enabled by using this module which is the ansible.builtin.service module so these two tasks are going to be executed or accomplished on this play and the play has the host name of amn1.technit.com so again, in this playbook, we have our second play. And the name of our second play is create a secondary Apache user. And the second play is going to be defined on the host development. Don't forget that in our inventory file, we had the development inventory. We grouped both the amn1.techni.com and amn and amn2.techni.com under the development group. So here, this is the second play. So in this playbook, we have two plays now, and we have the first task for this second play. So what the first task will do for this second play is that it would create the Apache user. This is the name of the task. So the task would create the name, the username Apache and is going to also make sure that the Apache user is in the group, will group, and it's going to use this module to do the job. And the module is ansible.builtin.user module. So in all, in all in this playbook, we have two plays and three tasks. So this is the first play, this is the second play, and this is the first task. This is the second task, and this is the third task. I mean, this task is the third task. So we have two plays and three tasks in this playbook. Before we run this playbook, I have to mention that playbooks are written in YAML format, meaning that there has to be a correct indentation that is the child-parent relationship. And this is what I mean. Whenever you want to write a playbook, so when you're writing the first play, it's going to follow the indentation this way. That is, the name and the host will be on the same line. And for task, you have a task. And then the name of the task will be a child to the parent task. And then also you're going to have the module to, they are going to be on the same line with the name of the task. And then the name of the of the package that the module will be working with is going to be a child to the parent module. You can see that's why you can see those lines here. And also for the second task, it's going to follow the same line. And if you look at the second play too, it's going to start here. And then the task comes back, back comes by rather, and then you have the child parent relationship. I have extensively thought about how to write a playbook in the Ansible Series 1 course. So I would recommend that you check that course if you want to learn more on how to write playbooks. I'll be dropping the link to that particular lesson in, in the description box below. I taught about a playbook, you know, um, extensively in that lesson. So now we can run this playbook. So here is my control node. And if I do PWD and I do LS, so this is a playbook which is 
playbook2.yml and you can see what we have here in the playbook. All right, so let's run this playbook. And before I run this playbook, I'd like to do um, a playbook syntax check to see if all the syntax or how the indentation, you know, if the indentation is correct. So if the syntax is not correct, of course, you're going to get an error and to show you where you're missing it, to show you the line where you're missing it. But if it is correct, you're going to, you're not going to get any error. So to check for the syntax, we can just say Ansible Navigator run model standard out. We can say playbook to the YML. Then we can say syntax check. All right, so because we do not get any error, it means that our syntaxes are correct. So now let's run this playbook. So I can just remove the syntax check here, and then I can say enter. All right, um, okay, fine. So we're done running this playbook. And if you look at the output here, you would see that yeah, you can see that my first play is to deploy Apache. It gathered the fact, which is the emn1.technic.com. And because we've already installed the HTTP package in our first playbook, you can see that this is green. So it did not install the HTTP, HTTP package again. And that's because it has done that before. So this is the idempotency, you know, um, feature of the Ansible playbook. And for the second task here, you can see the second task here, which is start and enable HTTPD. So it started and enable HTTPD on this host. And then for the second play, you can see here that we have created a secondary Apache user and it gathered fact on both this, on, on the two nodes, because don't forget that this is going to be accomplished on the development group and we have these two nodes on the development group and now what it did was to create the apache user the apache user one on both nodes which are the amn1 and amn2 nodes and if you look at the play recap you can see that we have two changes we have zero field task we have zero skipped task zero rescued and that's for the AMN1 and for the AMN2, we have just one changes and this is the recap. So this is how you're going to run a playbook. And also, um, there's I want to talk about dry run for a playbook. So I, I think you should check the link. You're going to learn more about um, how to use the dry run syntax of a playbook. So I want to say thank you for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like, share, enable. And when you do this, you will encourage us to do more. Victor here again. And in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the Ansible module and Ansible content collection. The Ansible module is a package or a tool or a unit of code that is used to accomplish your IT task. In the earlier versions of Ansible, modules and modules documentation or man pages were included with the Ansible software itself and they were named using their short names just like DNF, copy and etc. As Ansible became more popular and grew quickly, the number of modules it included increased a lot. So this caused some challenges especially when users wanted to to use older or newer versions of modules than the ones that came with a specific ansible version hence the upstream developers decided to organize most of these modules into different groups called ansible content collections each collection has related modules roles and plugins that work together and are supported by the same group of developers. 
Ansible or Ansible core itself is limited to a small set of modules provided by the Ansible.built-in Ansible content collection. Now you see why I said you should forget about the Ansible.built-in and pay attention to only the DNF when I was explaining what a module is in the previous lessons. Now, I want you to pay attention to the ansible.built-in parameter here. Starting from the ansible or ansible core version of 2.11, the modules are packaged in sets in the ansible.built-in ansible content collection. And because there are other types of Ansible content collection different from the Ansible.built-in. It is recommended that modules are named by their fully qualified collection names, that's the FQCNs, which in the case of our playbook, it's Ansible.built-in.dnf. However, if you don't have, if you don't name a module by its FQCN, Ansible still tries to resolve the short names. But to avoid error, it is a good practice to use the FQCNs in a playbook. The Ansible core package comes with the Ansible.built-in content collection, and these modules are always available for use. With Ansible Automation Platform 2 subscription, you can use over 120 certified content collections that Red Hat has provided. And additionally, there are many community supported collections on the Ansible Galaxy that you can access. Also, with this Platform 2 subscription, the default automation execution environment used by the Ansible Navigator, which is the ee.rela.supported, includes other various Ansible content collections. And for, of course, for you to check the collections, you can use the command Ansible Navigator Collections. So this is the similarity or the relationship between the module and the Ansible content collections. So thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe, share, like, comment. When you do this, you will encourage us to do more of those videos and bye for now. Hi everyone, Victor here again and I welcome you to this lesson which is using Ansible Hard Oak. Ansible ad hoc commands are just the basic Ansible commands. They help you to do simple tasks easily. Even though they are not as advanced as using playbooks, they are still very handy. And yes, we have used the Ansible ad hoc commands in one of our previous lessons, just that I didn't mention it that this is ad hoc. When we set our lab up in one of our previous lessons, we wanted to be sure that the controller can reach the manage nodes. We use the command ansible dash dash list dash host all, and we were able to get response from the managed host. This basic command using the ansible tool is hard hoc. If you remember, we also used the command ansible all dash m ping to ping the managed host. And this is also Ansible ad hoc or basic command. So the M, the dash M is the module and the module that we used is the ping module. And the tool that does the Ansible ad hoc command is Ansible. And of course, we can write a playbook to accomplish this task. Here is an example of a playbook to achieve this. When you run this playbook, you'll be able to ping the managed host, which we're going to see later on as we go on. But you know, I'd rather just use the add or command, especially when time is not on my side or for some test purposes. 
Another ad hoc command we used was when we were creating our inventory file in one of our previous lessons, the command is similar to or almost even the same as when we set our lab up, which is ansible dash dash list dash host production dash i, which is the inventory, then ansible inventory. This is just what ad hoc is. So now you know the differences between using ad hoc command and playbook for accomplishment of IT tasks. To know more about ad hoc, Please see the Ansible Series 1 lesson on ad hoc. I recommend that you see that lesson. I'll be dropping the link to that lesson in the description box below. So before we round off this course, let's just run some, you know, little commands, some little Ansible ad hoc commands. So here's my control node. And if I do PWD, you can see that I am in the home Victor Ansible directory just like you know how we've been doing in our previous lessons this is the directory where we have all our ansible files so what i'm going to do first is to try and list the number of hosts in the inventory file using the ad hoc command and just like we have done in one of our previous lessons i can just easily use the command ansible dash dash list list hosts all hosts so you can see that we have two managed nodes in the inventory file which are the amn1.techni.com and amn2.techni.com and another command if you remember that uh, we also like i said we also did um, the ansible ansible all module which is dash mping command so this is just to ping all the managed nodes to see if the control node can be able to reach or talk to the managed nodes and this is the way the ansible ad hoc, ad hoc command syntax is so first of all you're going to be having the ansible which is the tool the ad hoc tool followed by all which is the managed node so this all you can either specify a particular managed node and if you want to specify all the managed node you're going to have all here then followed by the module the module here is ping so we're trying to ping the managed nodes and you can also have an argument followed by whatever argument you want to use here but because i don't have any argument i want to use here so i'm just going to do this and when we do this let's see the result that we're going to have all right, so you can see the result. You can see that we have the success output, meaning that the control node is able to reach or ping amn2.technic.com and is also able to ping amn1.technic.com. And of course, we can, like I said, we can use a playbook to accomplish this. If I do cut all the YML, you can see this playbook. So if I just do Ansible, navigator then if i say run modu standard out so i want to run all yml So it's taking this time. So you can see that we also have success here, meaning that you can also do this by using the playbook. But I'd rather use the add up command, especially when I want to quickly do a test, you know, and I don't have time on my side. I won't be writing a playbook as far as I'm concerned, depending on what I want to do. And that's why I said, you know, the add up command can come very handy. So whenever you want to do some test purposes and you want to quickly check some, some things, some stuff, of course, you can use the ad hoc command. Another Ansible ad hoc we can use is, so if I want to check the uptime of the system or of the managed nodes, I can just say Ansible all. Then I can use the module, like I said, command module, and I can say uptime, which is the argument.
So you can see the uptime of the managed node amn2.technic.com. You can also see the uptime of the managed node amn1.technic.com. So I should also mention that by default, the add up command uses, uses the module, the um, command module. So I don't need to specify the module here. If I run the same command, I should have the same result. So you can see that we have the same result. Now that you know the differences between using the add up command and playbook for accomplishment of IT task, you can know when to use ad hoc and when to use your playbook. And of course, to know more about ad hoc, I recommend that you see the Ansible Series 1. In fact, I recommend that you see that course. I talked extensively about the Ansible ad hoc, and I'll be dropping the link to that particular lesson in the description box below. And so in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at how to create and manage Ansible variables. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. Whenever you do this, you will encourage us to do more of this video. And bye for now.